Hi everyone, this is Steven, and welcome back to this Wealthy Education Advanced Technical Analysis course. Today we are going to be talking about the Relative Volatility Index. This is the last of our volatility indicators that we'll be covering in this technical analysis course. The Relative Volatility Index measures a standard deviation of high and low prices over 10 time periods. The Relative Volatility Index, or the RVI, ranges from 0 to 100. The 50 level is used as a standard buy-sell indicator. So unlike some of our other volatility indicators, this one actually has a buy and sell indicator built into it. When the RVI goes above 50, this is a buy indicator. And when it drops under 50, this is a sell indicator. If you miss the buy signal at 50, the next buy point is 60. And if you miss the sell signal or going short signal at 50, the next sell opportunity is when the RVI drops under 40. Donald Dorsey invented the RVI, and these are some of the rules he came up with when he invented this volatility index. Another rule is that if you're holding a long position, you definitely want to sell when the RVI drops under 40. And if you're holding a short position, you definitely want to cover that position when the RVI rises above 60. The RVI should be used with other indicators, and it should be used to confirm buy and sell signals such as you might get with the MACD. Let's take a look at the RVI on a chart and see how it can help our trading. Let's use a chart of Procter & Gamble to show how we would trade RVI and use it in the technical analysis of a trade. First, we're going to go to the top and click Indicators. Type in RVI. We'll get the Relative Volatility Index. And now we're going to add in the MACD. Because we're going to use the RVI to confirm the MACD. I'd like to look at two trades that we could take with the RVI in the daily chart of Procter & Gamble. The first trade is a buy signal from the MACD. It's in a deeply oversold position and we get a buy signal here in mid-February. If we go to the RVI, it rises to 50, comes back, and then rises above 50, confirming the MACD buy signal. We would have entered the stock in late February, and the stock would have continued to trend down. And what I'd like to use this to show is an example of using technical indicators to enter a trade, but then the trade goes against you. While technical indicators are great for getting you into a position, because one or two technical indicators is giving a green buy signal, it does not mean the position will go in your favor every time. You need to have a trading plan in place for when the technical indicators are incorrect and make sure you trade that plan. So you needed to have a stop in place where you would have been stopped out of the stock as it continued to fall. In this particular trade, both the MACD and the RVI made it look like a good trade, but it turned out not to be. The stock continued down to the $72 level. And what happened was a negative divergence set up between the stock, which was trending down, and the MACD, which was trending up. But we wouldn't have known this at the time that we took the trade. But we could use that in our next trade because that gives this second trade a higher likelihood of working. We already had a negative divergence, a positive divergence set up when the MACD continued up and the stock continued down. Of course, we wouldn't have known that divergence was coming when we entered the trade. But we can use this positive divergence and its continuation, which we see here. As the MACD continues to move up and the stock continues to move down. This gives us a higher likelihood that this trade, when the MACD goes to a buy, 
and the RSI confirms in late May, and the RVI confirms. This would have been a good trade. We would have gotten in around 73 and the stock traded up to over $85. But just to reiterate, it's important to have a plan in place for each trade that you take, no matter what the technical indicators are telling you. Now, if we want to trade Procter & Gamble today, the stock has run up and now it's rolled over a little bit. We have our MACD, which looks like it's coming to a buy. And we have our RVI well above the 50 level. So what we would do is take a closer look at first the 15-minute chart, which has our RVI well below 50. It's actually down around 30. And our MACD going to a sell. So that's not a good indication that we want to get into the stock at this point. But let's look at an hourly chart and see if that's positive. And that also is negative. We have the RVI trending down under 30. And the MACD rolling over to a sell on the hourly chart. So that would give us some hesitation if we're trading on the daily chart to enter this trade at this point. We would want to wait until the 15 minute and the hourly both show a positive MACD signal and a positive RVI signal before entering the trade on a daily basis. So that's the RVI with Procter & Gamble. Thank you for watching this video on the RVI. We're now finished with our volatility indicator videos and we're going to move on to momentum indicators. And the first momentum indicator we're going to talk about in our next video is the momentum oscillator. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.